Okay, during this tutorial, we're going to talk about creating rounds and chamfers. A round is a rounded corner on the part, and a chamfer is an angled corner on the part. To create a round or a chamfer in FeatureCam, you first need to create a path for the tool to follow. You can draw your uh, path with lines um, and then curve them. Uh, or you can draw them with the arcs or whatever we whatever shape that you need your path of, uh, to be you can draw it. a lot of times we'll just uh, in class we'll just leave the stocks uh, the shape and put either chamfer surrounds on the already existing corners to do that I'm just going to use my line horizontal and line vertical and essentially just box in my stock I want to put the sh the round and the chamfer on the edges of the stock but I need to draw lines on the stock in order to have a path with follow. I cannot use the uh, stock edge itself. It's just not an it's not a piece of geometry that I can select. So I have those four lines. I'm gonna go back in and clip the extra lines and you'll notice that as I clip those lines it does not look like I put any lines in there, but there are. If you hover your mouse over one of those edges, you'll see a line icon by your cursor. That lets you know there's a line there. So I have my four lines. I go into features. Let's do a chamfer first. So I click chamfer. So here I need to pick your curves. Now, I can go through and I can curve using the curve wizard, using the uh, chain piece of geometry into an open boundary and I can create curves out of those lines. But since there is only one element to this chamfer or this round, I don't necessarily, necessarily have to curve the line. I can use the line as it is. So I can go in the chamfer, I can choose this curve, and you can see it chooses the line. And I can choose this bottom line, line one and line two. Now, machining side. This is the side that the tool is going to cut on. What you want to look at is the direction of the arrow. And it's hard to see right now, but here's the arrow for this edge, and here's the arrow for this edge. You'll notice that line one is putting on the outside. The outside is where we want to do our cutting. That one's okay. Line two is pointing to the inside. That is uh, incorrect for our chamfer here. So we need to switch the machining side on this. In order to switch our machining side, we want to have the line selected and then click this button over here which says switch machining side. I click that button, the arrow points to the outside, that's where our cutter is going to go. Hit next, offset from Z, just like an offset from Z on our pocket or our boss. This is the distance away from Z0 that we want to place it. Z0 is the top of our part here, so we're going to leave that at 0. Now you have dimensions, width and depth. These are two dimensions that make up the chamfer. If you're using a 45 degree chamfer bit, your width and your depth should be the same. So let's just put quarter inch for this. You can hit preview and you see it up updates both of them. Hit next, climb mill, finish pass. I'm gonna go ahead and check rough pass just to be on the safe side, it doesn't hurt. So I have rough pass checked, hit next, and then this is where you'd have your tool. I don't have a chamfer bit in my tool crib right now, so that's why you see the stars. And then you can hit finish and hit okay. Now, let's, find a let's, let's go back to our tool crib Here's our new trip, and let's find a chamfer tool. Now you'll see that you don't necessarily see a, a chamfer bit, but there is a chamfer mill, and this is um, 
a 45 degree angle chamfer mill. You can also use a countersink to do the same job. And that's oftentimes what we will use in class. So I will add that countersink and change this to tool number five. Hit OK. Save to tool in the new crib. And now you can come in and you can choose countersink. And actually, I chose the wrong countersink. This is an 82 degree countersink. I need a 90 degree countersink. So I'm going to go back into my tool manager and just remove this tool and find my 90 degree countersink and change that number to 5. Apply. OK. OK. Yes, you can see that the tool has updated. And if I run my simulation, it chamfers those edges. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a rounding bit as well. So here I can come down and find a rounding mill. Let's find a radius. That's an eighth inch radius. Here's a quarter inch radius. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to set this as tool six. Save my crib. Go into features. And round works exactly like chamfer, just you have a radius rather than a width and a depth. So I'll hit next. I'll go out and choose my two sides, which are the lines. Machining side, again, this needs to be pointing towards the outside. You can see if I rotate this around, this left round looks okay. It, it looks like it's supposed to. But the the right round, it's kind of curving to the outside, and that's not what we want. So we need to make sure we highlight that, and we need to reverse the machining side so it points out. And that's with this little button here. So now both of them look good. I hit next. I'm not doing an offset. And here's where I put my radius in, and we have a quarter inch radius bit. So I'm going to set my radius as quarter inch. Hit next, turn on a rough pass. Next, there's my tool selected, so I can hit finish. I can run my simulation, and you can see that I now have a rounded edge and chamfered edges on this block. And you can see my two operations here. Here's a rough pass for my chamfer, finish pass for my chamfer, rough pass for my round, finish pass for my round. So again, what you're doing is creating a path for that bit to follow, uh, to cut your round, or to cut your chamfer. You can create offsets. You can curve this using the curve wizard and we'll make this a chamfer and I'm just going to tell you now we're going to get some errors but that's okay. This is just for illustration. I can do a chamfer, click my chamfer curve, machining side is pointing out, turn on a rough pass. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish and notice that now, the tool should follow that path. I'm going to get some gouging over here. That's just because there's still material there. But now, you see that the chamfer come in, came in, went back to the corner, and then back out. So it follows that path. So you can make a complex path for a chamfer or a round to follow. Again, make a curve, use your features, round, chamfer, they both operate the same when you set them up. The difference is a chamfer is a width and a depth to get an angled cut and a round is a radius. All right. That's